Here we go. All right. Well, welcome everybody to, um, I guess, our first July sportscast. We've been off for a few weeks, so thanks for coming back and, and being patient with us while we were out. Uh, for those, I think it was uh, maybe one or two new people. So I'm, uh, I'm Jason Blank, uh, Senior Director of Sports, and my co-host, Don. How are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Again, the original, the original two back at it. So okay. nobody does it better. <laughs> <laughs> As we say with a room full of ex co-hosts. <laughs> oh boy. So how how is it? Uh, how does it feel to have sports back, Don? Uh, it's pretty freaking awesome, actually. <laughs> um, last night, two good uh, NBA games. Uh, did it, did. Who, anybody else like me, did anybody run, run out of Netflix shows to watch and are happy to have something to watch at night? <laughs> well, those who didn't get to see The Last Dance on ESPN can now watch that on Netflix. My, my sister texted me yesterday and said, hey, I just started The Last Dance. And she, she hates basketball, but apparently she's into it, so. <laughs> yeah, it was, that, that was a, it, was, it was pretty good. I mean, again, somebody who's kind of lived through that era, experienced it, but being able to see that all again was was pretty neat. And, uh, you know, I know we debated the greatest of all time, but you know, Michael was a pretty extraordinary talent. And, and uh, I think a lot of, you know, that passion that he had to be the best that he could be really hasn't been seen in anybody since except Kobe, quite honestly. Kobe's the mm -hmm. only other person I've seen come out that really has that you know, killer mentality. Unfortunately, it translates to kind of being a jerk to your teammates sometimes when you when you constantly push them. Um, but you know, you should you should know what that feeling is like, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you have to, I'm just, I'm just, I was gonna, I was going to make a joke, but I decided not to. I'm going to stop myself there. Well, you might, uh, <laughs> I'll have to uh, call on but, you, call uh, you Pip. Hey, Pip. <laughs> Yeah, I would say from the last dance, it reminded me. I so growing up, I hated I hated the Bulls and Jordan because my brother liked them, so I just couldn't agree with them. So it just made me miss those uh, Utah Jazz and Seattle SuperSonics teams that I had cheered for in the finals. So did I tell you guys the story yet about how how I bought baby Air Jordans for my daughter when she was like two? No, I, I spent haven't. fifty bucks on these air, baby air black air. My wife was so mad because she, she all she ever did was wear dresses, and then she always, you know, I I was the type where I didn't want my kid to be barefoot. Always had to have shoes on, and so <laughs> always went out and had black black baby Jordan. And then one night we were doing something I can't remember what it was, and I left them sitting on top of the car like after I put her in her car seat and drove off and and it, they fell off and I found one on our street and the other we lived right off of, of the highway and I walked out highway for two hours looking for that stupid little black shoe that cost me 25 because you know or 25 each Never got it. My wife never lets me live that down. She was glad that they were lost and gone. But I, I, I just looked them up on eBay. They're worth about eight grand right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, I've got one. Is that four grand? No, you need the set. <laughs> oh man. So I was gonna go over real quick with the sports being back, just kind of a reminder of kind of where we're at we're all, with all of them and, and kind of you know, some are starting, yeah. some are kind of in the middle. So uh I had to do a little research on Major League Soccer because uh, I'm not a, I'm not a avid viewer, but try to keep tabs on what's going on. So, Don, do you know how they what how they came back? How? They they are in a bubble, and they are in a oh, bubble yeah. in another area yeah. that uh, they're they're sharing a bubble with uh, the NBA, kind of. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, you're right, and they haven't had, I think, any. Uh, people test positive since they started as well. They, they had a rough start, but once they started playing, um, I think they've been good. Uh, they, had, they had a couple early on in the bubble that caused some problems. And there's two teams that dropped out before the tournament even started um, because of coronavirus stuff. But so their format, it's kind of, it, it, it's almost, this is almost one of the Don Wigginton models here. So they, they did more of a World Cup type format so they had the uh, 24 teams they went into six 
pools. They did pool play. And then... Uh, you caught me off guard by jumping into that topic. What was that? <laughs> you caught me off guard by jumping into oh. the topic. <laughs> uh, so, they, so they did pool play. So they were four pool play. They did uh, round robin. And the top teams advanced to play in the elimination round. So right now they're in the quarterfinals. So they should be done... Uh, in about two weeks, they'll be finished with their, their their tournament. But that was kind of like your pitch for the NBA to do like a March Madness style tournament where everybody's in and you just say, one and done, you're going. But a little easier to do in soccer. Yeah. I mean, again, I think that just proves that bubbles work. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that, Don. <laughs> well, that's why I'm, that's why you, you threw me off. I, are we in the bubble topic or not? I no, like no, no, no. That's a, well, that's later. <laughs> oh, all right. Um. And then you do I, I know the NBA started. So the NBA started. Uh, oh, you lost. There you are. Um, <laughs> the NBA started yesterday, right? Officially. Mobulate three three weeks off, and yeah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> That's unnecessary. Oh boy! So the NBA started yesterday. Well, they have like an eight game regular season left. Is that what they're doing? Wait, who are you talking about now? The NBA. <laughs> Your, your expertise. It's been a la light, late last couple nights. Your goodness. <laughs> um, right. So they got through a, kind of an eight-game scrimmage, um, and I watched quite a bit of those. And so, uh, but last night started the kind of the the race to the top. Actually, the race to the playoffs. And so, well, I'm sure Tyler can explain this much better than I can. Uh, they they let in, you know, typically the top eight in each conference get into the playoffs. So what they did was they looked at teams, I think that were within striking distance, which was I think four and a half games. Yeah. And let those teams in as well. So it actually only turned out to be one extra team from the Eastern Conference and I don't know, three or four from, from the Western Conference. So the idea is that it, during the rest of this regular season, these eight games, uh, if if they're if the I guess maybe that that's maybe that was the four games. So if they're within four four and a half games between eighth and ninth place, they'll do like a play in. The only difference is instead of a winner takes all, they'll play. Um, it's like a seated advantage. So if you're if you finish eighth, the ninth team has to beat you twice. So there's a there's a play in game. If eighth wins, then boom, they they're they're the eighth seed. If the ninth wins then they have to play again. So it's, gotcha. I, I've not seen that in basketball. It was, it's a pretty typical thing that I've seen in double elimination for like baseball. Like a lot of my kids games, they would, they go to the loser's bracket, then they would have to like win twice at the end. Or yep. something like that. Um, so it, I, it makes sense. I actually, I actually like that. Uh, I think I was, I was actually rooting for the Pelicans last night because I think they have a pretty good chance, but they, they blew it by losing their first game to the Jazz. Um, I, I, I saw, I looked, I, when I was doing research this morning, I was like, oh, wait, they already started yesterday. And I, I saw the LeBron James finish. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, that was a good time. I saw the last part of that um, last night since we had the coaches meeting. And, and yeah, it was good. I mean, it was entertaining. I'm, I'm amazed sometimes watching – uh, AD play. I mean, the, it's like a Kev, Kevin Durant, where they're so tall they can play inside, yet stands back and pops a couple threes off, no problems. So, mm. um, we're, I know we're not talking NBA, but I, I, I think that they're the favorites. Even, even though I don't like them, I still think that that probably Lakers will will win this one. And but I don't think the Bucks will be in the finals. So, oh, there you go. And then, that, that's because. Just that go cool for Giannis to go to the Warriors next year. Is that what, that's what, is that what your your opinion is? <laughs> that oh man, uh, <laughs> so they, they 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 play a few games and they'll start their playoffs when like two three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's eight games, something like that. Well, the playoffs themselves, as we know, can take forever. Yeah. Hey, uh, there, there's new news today with the uh, in baseball. Do you see that? Yeah, I was just transitioning that way. <laughs> so, so it's all connected there somehow with the uh, that uh, you know the Cardinals. Yeah, the, the news today is that the Brewers uh, game is postponed because Cardinals players have tested positive, and the Cardinals just came from playing at Minnesota. 
So we'll see if that affects that series at all, too. They played last night, though. Um, but for now, the Major League Baseball season has started. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they actually went with your plan, 60 games. The teams only play their divi- in their division or the opposite league. So the Brewers are playing AL Central, and then they'll play AL Central teams. Uh, they changed the pl- playoff format. Top two teams from each division make the playoffs plus two wild cards. Is my, I think that's I like that. Settled on. So, uh, which it's always been, it's always been crazy to watch 162 games to watch, you know, six teams make it in or whatever. So yeah, so I get the uh, both worlds. Now it's only 60 games and there's extra teams in the playoffs. Right. <laughs> and I don't know. We missed this yesterday because I think most of us were super busy. And I don't know if there had been some – I think there was discussion before, but the double headers now will all be seven innings. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Wow. So and if you go into – if you're in a double header and you go into extra innings and you start that new extra inning rule with a runner on second in the eighth inning then. Oh, yeah, but that, but that extra – the extra innings rule is for every game now, right? Right, right, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, they should have I made every game seven innings, but that's a whole different discussion. The, so, Major League Baseball is like the score. That'd be more exciting. What was that? First the score. <laughs> that puts that puts a home team in a really bad disadvantage. Uh, yeah, you know what? Considering I hate the overtime rules for football, I like the college ones. They should do it more like that. First yeah, I score, agree. Or you get a chance to tie in the bottom of the inning. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Really? <laughs> no. um, so, uh, Major League Baseball is the one I've been watching the most of just because my, my twins are supposed to be good this year. And uh, and I like the fact that they hit a home run on their first pitch they saw all season. So, that's great. I'm all for – I'm all for watch. I, I, like, I like that we have baseball every single night. There's only, what, two, three – they have, what, three days off in the next few months. Yeah. So – you always have something to watch if they can, if they can continue and they don't get postponed and canceled and all that stuff. But uh, that's been fun to see um, and watch from 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 my perspective. How many people watch some either some baseball this year so far? Brewers or there you go. All right, uh, last one that's coming back officially comes back tomorrow. That's the one I'll be watching the most of <laughs> going forward. The NHL starts up tomorrow. They've done one uh, – each of the, all the teams did an exhibition game already, but uh, the, the, the true – what they're calling the qualifying round starts tomorrow. So it's not a playoff round, and it's not a regular season. It's something. Um, but uh, they'll start uh, – seeds 5 through 12 will play a five-game series to see who makes it to the uh, playoffs. And the seeds 1 through 4 for each conference will play um, – um, if the, the top four seeds from each conference will play around Robin to figure out what seed they are. So, right. so, so every team gets to play, right? There's, there's seven teams that did not make it. Oh, okay. So they took the top 12 from each conference. Gotcha. All right. And so and, where, where do you watch most, where can a normal person watch most of the hockey games? <laughs> Uh, it's on the NBC network, uh, family of, you know, family of networks there. So mostly NBCSN. Uh, there's some that are tomorrow. There's, I think tomorrow and Sunday, there's some games on NBC. And then uh, if there's multiple games going on, they'll have it on USA as well. But uh, the fun part about hockey is they start like for the next week and a half, they have games that start at 11 in the morning and then the last game will end at like midnight. So there's going to be hockey all day, every day for the next almost two weeks all right so for this weekend for a person who doesn't typically watch hockey which games would you recommend oh i'm gonna have to pull it up hold on give me give me a sec i have to pull up my app (laughs) nicole's gonna say whatever the abs play but i wouldn't agree with that (laughs) and i i wouldn't recommend watching the wild game because it starts at like 9 30 on sunday but you're your easy ones to find uh, tomorrow on NBC are going to be the Blackhawks and Oilers at two and the Penguins and Canadians at seven. But I think Sunday at two Bruins Flyers will be a good one. That's my recommendation. All right. Bruins Flyers. And so which one will have the best fight? Bruins Flyers. (laughs) 
So we might as well punch anybody. <laughs> so who's the who are the favorites? So uh, let's see. The Avalanche are in the top four. I get that. Uh, Colorado and St. Louis are looking are the favorites right now in the Western Conference. And what they got going for them is that they were been hurt all year, and so now they're healthy because they've been off for so long. I'd say probably Boston and Tampa are the two top ones in the Eastern Conference. Boston was there last year, and Tampa should have been, um, but they got upset in the first round last year. So um, there'll be some fun ones to watch. The only problem with watching like the Bruins Flyers game is that game doesn't mean as much because they're not going to get eliminated from it. But oh, it still yeah. should be good. But if they don't like each other, it always makes a, a, a good rivalry game is always yeah to watch. Yeah, and those might be more fun to watch because they're more closely talented. But, uh, um, but yeah, so we'll see. I'm just excited it's back. And if I seem tired on Monday or, or Wednesday, it's because I stayed up till one in the morning watching the Wild play. So that, is, that's is, my excuse. Is Alice going to sit and watch with you? She'll be long asleep. <laughs> <laughs> she, may, she may wake up while I'm watching it. <laughs> Oh boy! For those right, that well, that's your little girl, what was that? I said for those that didn't know that are on the thing, that's your little girl. Yeah, just just don't buy her baby Air Jordans, and you'll be okay. <laughs> She'll you must grow have little baby fake skates or something, right? I she might be able to. I'm, I'm making her out there soon. <laughs> um, the other, the next thing topic we're gonna touch base on. So today. I was, we were talking about this today. We'd be out at Carroll University getting things set up for OST if it was, uh, wasn't a COVID year. So uh, we were going to go around and see if anybody wants to share uh, their favorite memories or moments from OST if you guys have been out there before, whether it's the state one or the regional competition. So bocce, softball, tennis, uh, t-ball, golf. Anybody, anybody normally participate in OST? Now hold on, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want to share something from what you what you like about uh, outdoor sports? I like football. Like my hometown is the Cardinals from high school, from high school, and my football team is the Cardinals. So the Cardinals. Um, cool. And they play football. Sometimes they get hurt, or sometimes they get touchdowns. They're doing very really good. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Brian? I like it because I like to be being with my friends. You with your friends? Yeah. That's very cool. What sport did you do at Outdoor State Tournament, Brian? Did you do Bocce. Bocce. Bocce player. Okay. Yeah. That's that's one of my favorite things about OST is getting all the bocce courts out and the football stadium be able to watch what twenty six games at once. That's that's really cool to see and it's really fun to see uh, um, all the teams be able to compete there. So yeah, my my favorite OST thing is that we don't have to put bocce courts together anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Because I remember up in Eau Claire, we'd go up there and there was all these little gnats all over the place and it'd be 110 degrees and we'd have all this PCV piping that we would be pounding into the ground and yeah, it was not fun. But what was fun, what I do remember and I would love for us to be able to do someday is if we get back to being a two-day tournament, we used to have the very first night um, of opening ceremonies for OST up in Eau Claire. And we had a, a really big picnic. We had a, like a barbecue picnic for everybody, for all the athletes. And so that was really fun for everybody to get up there and kind of hang out. And we had the opening ceremony and lighting of the, the torch outdoors. And uh, I, I hope that we can get back to that some point because that was, that was fun. Yeah. Anyone remember that besides me? Oh, wow. on the call. I know she must remember. Yeah. Um, I, th I thought you were going to share your favorite mem memories from tennis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Plenty of those. Too many. Too many. I just can't uh, keep them all straight. 
All right. Should we move on to our uh, Who Am I quiz? Sure. You have it up? Uh, I do. Yep. Okay. So for those of you who haven't been on this, or it's been a while anyways, we're going to do a, a quiz. Uh, so we're going to list some clues off about somebody, and you just guess who that person thing is. Uh, something sports related. I will, I will, that's our, that's the, the realm that we're in. Um, if you want to guess, feel free to guess in the chat. Um, if you, or it will also, I mean, there's enough, there, we can watch for hands raised too. So if you want to raise your hand, we can try to unmute you and do that. But somebody may snipe you in the chat there. So, so I can start it off. So who is this? Who is this? I was born in Milwaukee. Now we right off the bat? No, well, not me. <laughs> no. All right, Don. I know how to I know how to draw a crowd. Hmm. And I'm not very good artistically, but no. <laughs> I was originally known as Milt. Oh. Is that oh. Milt the Stilt? That's not the basketball player, is it? It's not Milt the Stilt. That was Wilt, I think. Oh. <laughs> You're so slow. Ah. It's Friday. All right. We're, we're going to catch up one of these weeks. We're going to be back to old form. <laughs> You're, You're up. No. Uh, <laughs> I was born, no, I first appeared in 1973. Has Alex got her hand up? Alex, you have your hand up? No. Oh. Oh, you just okay. scratched. Okay. I retired in 1984. Hmm. Nope. I don't know who it is. Brian, Brian's struggling with it. No. Yeah. <laughs> I unretired in 1993. All right. That one should be getting, hopefully, we'll get easier here. My favorite sport is baseball, followed closely by luge. All right, you're getting here's another one. I love it when the Brewers hit a home run. Oh. <laughs> Before we go to initials, I might, I'm gonna throw another bonus thing in there. I'm recognizable for my facial hair. Nate, Nate sent it to me right away. He sent it to me in the private chat. Let's see if anybody else has it. And the initials are BB. Brittany. No. Oh. No. Wow. All right. Uh, Nate, do you want I to share? I have a big head. What's that? I have a big head. Right? Does he have a big head? Yeah. I, I'll clarify, the luge clue was about a slide. Must yeah. not have a lot of baseball fans. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to I live at Miller Park. Yeah. No? Uh, uh, All right, Brian. Ronnie Brewer. Here we go. Really? I was worried. I was worried because I didn't have a little extra information out there, but I may have been a little bit too hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. better than my Giannis one. I always go back to that one. I got guess on the first clue. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. Well, we're all we're all rusty today, so we'll we'll get back to it next week. <laughs> okay. Good job, Brian. All right. Don, you can put your image back up. We're going to talk about bubbles. Oh, okay. I was trying to get my Bernie Brewer image up, but I'm 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 really, really not doing well today. Does everybody? Maybe I should do this just because some people don't know him. I guess if I can't even spell Brewer right today. Bump, 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 bump. Where's my? Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. 
There's Bernie. Look at that mustache. I wonder if there's a mask big enough for him. So, so Milt is, uh, my clue for Milt was, Milt Mason was the fan that sat on top of the scoreboard for 40 days until the Brewers sold out. So that was, um, and then three years later they made it. So he's known as the original Bernie Brewer. I also learned he retired because they put bleachers out where his house was. That's not Milt? No, that's not Milt. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Or this guy. He's 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 been in too many baseball games with his hat on backwards. <laughs> Don't wear your hat backwards, so that's what happens. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, All right. Know. All right. So, <laughs> bubble time. Bubble time. So you know, we talked about the sports that are back, Major League Soccer, NBA, MLB, and AHL, and three of the four are in bubbles. And the uh, fourth one, MLB, is not, and the NFL is planning on coming back, and they're not. So the question is, um, will non-bubble sports complete their season? I'll put it that way. So, you, know, you know we skipped a topic. I know we did. I just realized that. <laughs> That's all right. We'll we, go back to it. We'll go back to it. That's I'm fine. I'm going to get my I, bubbles up. I'm not I've thinking about it again. I've also missed two polls, so I'm we're really on top of things. <laughs> all right. Don, will, will teams that are not in the bubble finish their seasons? I do think that they will. I don't think it's going to be I, – I think that they'll figure out a way to finish, but it's going to be very – disruptive in terms of the games. Um, I th actually, I think that, that NFL is probably watching MLB pretty closely right now and um, hoping to not repeat the same mistakes. I don't know how you do a bubble with football. I guess there's a way you could do it, but in terms of the size of teams and I, I, the logistics of that would be pretty hard. But um, I, yeah, I think MLB will get through it. They may have to abbreviate the season. They may have to ultimately go down to kind of playing it, it trying to create a small bubble. Uh, but I think I think a big part of this will will come down to the spread and how many teams. It's going to happen, um, but are they able to contain it after that that spread? Um, and if it pops up again, I don't know. I mean, you know, on a side note. There are a lot of interesting experiments that are kind of going on right now with COVID, um, and particularly in the in the bubble teams. I don't know. I was reading the other day that that the NBA, um, with all the testing that they're doing there, uh, there's actually a group they're they're doing testing. If anybody has ever had a COVID test, or if they've heard about it, they basically stick something up your nose, and it's pretty unpleasant. Um, so they're actually testing out a saliva based uh, test kit and they're doing it there with at the NBA because they're all kind of in a bubble there. The other thing is I think with the soccer, they were doing some antibody testing as well to kind of figure out if, if, uh, which of the athletes um, get uh, antibody resistance. So for me, it always was a great you know, kind of experiment. So um, I do think that it'll be successful for the teams to do that. Um, and I do think, though, that, that MLB will get through it somehow. But I, I don't think NFL will come out of this with the same plans. And, and some of us had the conversation on Wednesday night about college teams. And, and I, you know, that's the kind of the same thing. They're not going to be in any type of bubble. And so what happens the first time, and I'm not sure, like, an example would be, is Nebraska coming here? Or are we going to Nebraska this year? Either way, if what happens if after following the game, um, you, you know, you have a, you have a test and there's eight, 10 athletes, you, you know, what are you going to do? And then they're, they're going to start canceling games. You can't make up those games, right? MLB, they can make up games. They can do double headers. Um, I don't, you know, I, I, you can't do double headers in football. So I'm not sure how, how they're going to do that. I, I, I hope you're right. I don't think you're right. <laughs> you don't, know, you think I, baseball will not complete? I, here, here, this, I guess there's, there's two main reasons for that. One, um, we're a week into baseball and we're already canceling. We've canceled a series. <laughs> I mean, postponed a series or whatever it is. And I don't know if you heard more details on the whole Marlin situation. No, why? You... 
What was that? Go ahead and fill us in. I didn't. Yeah. So the Marlins. So Marlins had tested. They had what 13, 14 players that tested positive. Well, prior to that, the day before they had all those positive tests, what ended up happening was uh, they had a few, uh, two or three positive tests, and there's nothing in the MLB protocol on how to manage if you have that. You know what? At what level you have to let Major League Baseball know. So the Marlins just had their team captain make the decision whether or not they're going to play. Texted all the did a group text to see who would be willing to. They all said yes, because if they don't play, they don't get paid. And then they let, let the Marlies players make the same decision. So you left it up to the players to make a decision of whether or not they want to play. They want to play because they want to get paid. And then now the next day you have 14 players, you have an outbreak. And, and so you have that, if you ask, I mean, we've learned this from other sports, football and hockey. If, so if you ask somebody who has a concussion, if they have a concussion, they're going to say no, and they're going to want to play. And you ask somebody who has COVID if they feel like play, they'll say yes. And, um, and, and then I just think about that. They we're talking about Major League Baseball right now, and you have a third of the, your roster that's, that's infected, and then you have to cancel games and all that type of stuff. And then you just start to look at football, and you're going to, what, have 100 people per team traveling with the team. And we all know how well NFL players listen to rules. I mean, you tell them not to go out and – party the night before a game and there's guys out there partying the night before the game. So uh, with no bubble there, I just don't, I mean, it's just going to, I think it's going to just keep, and then especially when you get football, baseball, you at least are outside and you're distant on the field. You're not making direct contact a lot of times, maybe over, you know, first. <laughs> what? They're all in the dugout. So it doesn't matter what, the, what they're doing out in the field. They're in the dugout. But let me ask you this. What, what, where is the problem is it not having a bubble or inadequate testing, right? So in other words, if they had had daily testing and they had, I mean, that's the other thing, even though NBA is in the bubble, they have different tiers of who gets tested when. Sure. And, um, you know, if you're a player, obviously you're in that tier one head coach. Um, some of the trainers that, you know, have physical touching of the athletes, they're all in that tier one. They're getting tested every day, you know, so would if there was more testing, would you have headed off and known maybe when there was one person or two per well, they're they're testing every other day in major league baseball, I believe. Every other day? Okay. Yeah. It's not every day, it's every other day. But the the, the what the problem is is there's the, with the no bubble, it's on the player responsibility to follow and make the safe decision. And I think what we're finding out with the Marlins is it started with some people who decided not to make the right decision or not to make the safe decision. And so that's what brings it into the clubhouse. And if you've been in any sort of locker room in any sort of sport, things will spread like crazy in there because you're so confined in what you're doing. And then you add in the NFL where people are going to be making close physical contact with each other every single play. Uh, not to mention that every, not every NFL stadium is going without fans. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, and I don't, that's why I don't – I, I don't think it's fair to talk football yet because I think they're going to be changing what they're going to, I, I don't think there's no way they're going to have fans. There, there's just, there's no way. I mean, you talk about, you know, the social distance of, of teams, you know, even if you try to separate people, you know, they're all going to the beer line, they're going to the bathroom line. Um, and if you've ever had to go to the bathroom in, in Lambeau field, you're, there's no social distancing there. And so, um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Let me ask you another question. And, and just again, part of it is curiosity, but also I think that there's sometimes questions that, that are out there that people don't ask. Um, uh, the reason the Marlins, I'm assuming, all voted to go ahead was because they were probably all um, asymptomatic, right? That none of them had any symptoms. They weren't sick. So they're like, we feel fine. What, you know, we, all of a sudden we get this test back saying we can't play. Um, so, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just asking what if they all sick, they get it once. Brittany, would you like to share your comments? Class? I literally just said this. I typed to Jason. I think people assume that professional athletes that test positive will be asymptomatic. There's a chance someone gets seriously sick or worse. And maybe the organizations will whistle a different tune if and when that happens. I mean, I hope it doesn't happen, yeah, but it yeah. very well, easily could. And in, 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 in all likelihood, when you look at the statistics, it'll be a manager, right? Right. Well, well and hey, I, Nate, Nate, I wonder if you know, 
know this answer. Who's the Braves player, the star player that got COVID before the season started? Do you remember who that was? Freeman? Yeah, Freeman. So he he got he got uh, COVID before. Um, and now, hey, Ned, I'll mute you if you want to add anything to this. But uh, um, he got COVID before the season, and he had a temperature up to like 104. And he, he said he felt like he was – closer to the end there um, at some point he was he was kind of hoping that he wouldn't die from it yeah. and sorry um yeah he he said like he was praying that like uh not to take him um I remember hearing that and then um a few other of his teammates I remember hearing backed out just because of uh hearing about a situation but a couple of them have actually uh opted to come back in as of the other uh, the last day or two Okay. So. Yeah. So just because they're a professional athlete doesn't mean that they're not going to get a, a high fever or, or some of the other symptoms or even put themselves in life, life threatening situations. And just because they don't feel the symptoms doesn't mean, yeah, you're right. It's not going to pass on to somebody who's going to. Right. Um, but the problem is too right now with, with baseball is that you, you, you they're traveling and they, they they did not pack any days in between i mean you, like i said there's only three off days in the next three months or so and so you got a visiting locker room that if they test positive the next day and they leave there's another team that's already been in that visiting locker room at that point and and that's where we that's where we found the problem with the phillies yankees i mean phillies yankees was because they, they were for the phillies and then you had you know orioles and, um marlins got canceled and now brewers uh, St. Louis and St. Louis just came from Minnesota. So should Minnesota and Cleveland both take some time to figure out if people, you know, like it's just that domino effect where teams are traveling to each other and they're connecting with each other. And there's not a whole lot of time for test results to come back and to react to them. So what's the tipping point? In other words, do we just have like a slow dribble and teams get it and we have some cancellations uh, does it take somebody getting seriously ill and, and entering the hospital for I, them to finally say enough is enough? I, I think if you have somebody who's on a ventilator for a while or, or passes away from it, I think that's going to screech a lot of things to a halt. But don't but, you think somebody at some level must have had these conversations? Well, they, there's like I said, there's a 150, do, 150 page document for returning to play for baseball and it still forgot things. So I don't know. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's some, especially if you think about people who like do public relations and all that stuff would have it. But anyways, the, I just don't, I don't see it happening. And like I said, it, especially with NFL stadiums, not, you know, I know you're saying wait on football, but they're allowing crowds in and all that type of stuff. And, and you, and you talked about the different tiers. I know for baseball, there's like a tier two, like there's, there's like a media person for each team that can come in contact with players that are maybe watched a little bit more than some others. And then I know broadcasts are not being done on site if you're an away team and that type of stuff. So they've minimized some of the outside world contact at the event, but they still get to go home and go to the grocery store and do whatever they want on their own time. <laughs> and and uh, so – and that's What's the over-under of when this stops? Uh, with the way it's been trending, I give it two weeks. <laughs> okay. So, and again, I, I just, I like talking about this, I, I just putting it in the spot. So in two weeks they say, okay, we're just going to pause. Do they have a way back? In other words, is there it, time to create a bubble or a, 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 even a five city bubble or something like the, that? If the for based on how the uh, negotiations went at the beginning this the, for this whole thing, the union and the players don't like each other. So I think it'd be really the players were the ones who said they didn't want a bubble. It wasn't the Major League Baseball. So it would have to take the players being convinced to do it. Um, and Major League Baseball was okay saying okay because it saved them money. I, the thing well, that they are going to get paid, they're not guaranteed contracts, are they? Do they get paid if they don't play? No. So they're got to agree to something. Right. Didn't they end up agreeing to basically what MLB said anyway? No, I mean, no, because MLB, it, 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 was, it was money related. They, they got basically what they would have been paid for 60 games compared to, like, okay. so they, they wanted to take less or whatever. Money. Okay, so see, yeah. so what does that tell you, Jason? Well, I would say, here, here, you're going to put it up. Here's the thing. The reason, the, the reason why this season will end is because there's three billion reasons why it should end, and that's the money that it would bring in. <laughs> there you go. Come on, Don. 
Three billion? Three billion. All right. I am just so slow today. <laughs> there Don't even that. I remember I have a poll here. <laughs> so oh, let's right. do a poll. <laughs> will leagues that didn't use a bubble, Major League Baseball and NFL, will they be able to complete their full season? That's the way I asked it. Yes or no? Just vote yes because you like me. <laughs> As you say that, somebody voted no. <laughs> All right. Now I know how people really feel. All right. I'll call it here. Yeah, go ahead and call it. Share results. We had seven to three. I say no. So a lot of pessimists like me out there, Don. But okay, but let's just go back though for a second. Like, you really don't think that if it happens in two weeks, they're, it's just done. We're just not playing anymore. What was that? You really think that if, if in two weeks it's so bad that they, they put a pause, that they will not come back and play the rest of the year? You think, uh, you think that they'll, they'll pause for a bit and then, then figure something out and come back? I mean, it's, the good news is they have time on their side. They don't, they're not restricted to a schedule at, that, at this point, I don't believe, that, I mean, where if something were to be delayed, I think it still would work out okay. So um, if, if they ultimately have a world – will they? I guess the question is, will there ultimately be a World Series this year? Right. And I don't – yeah. I'm not as confident. <laughs> I guess that wasn't your question, huh? Well, I guess I the question, question is, I technically will win. So now <laughs> I'm the World Series. I, I said if they completed the season, I guess that would mean the MLB season would complete in a World Series champion. champion. Yeah, right. All right. We'll, we'll both win this one. Okay. <laughs> you want, all right. Do you want to do, the, uh, do your other one here? The, uh, so I watched, I watched clips of the NBA. I watched – Major League Baseball games. I just watched clips of MLS, and I know the NBA is definitely doing some sort of crowd noise presentation thing. So, what do you think about? I know you watched that. What do you think about how is how do how do you feel about the crowd noise presentation coming from the NBA? I think from the NBA, I I don't know. Let's put it this way: if it fades into the background, you're watching the game, and you know they're doing a good job. Yeah. So, um, I, I see. You know, again, a basketball court smaller, so it's easier to fill in. First off, those arena they're not playing in giant arenas. I right. mean, where they're playing isn't very big to begin with. It's in a ballroom, isn't it? Yeah, so you basically have – and it, the camera angle is only from one side, so you don't see – you know, now you're only talking about three-quarters of the court. Uh, you rarely – you know, maybe the end lines, but you're used to end lines not being – having a whole lot there. And so they've got video boards, and they've got – sometimes they just have – um, screen images. Sometimes they have, you know, looks like they've got a lot, you know, people that are in there on Zoom um, cheering. And so it, it the noise, you know, it, it depends. I watched one preseason and they just played music and I, I didn't like that at all. So I just watched it on mute. Uh, but then I discovered actually after halftime, it was based on like it, the, the same game was on either YouTube TV or NBA.com, and again, one had announcers and one didn't, so I'm not sure what was going on there. Sure. But again, the the other ones that I've watched, it's again, I I don't notice it when I watched a couple of the baseball games. I mean, yeah, it's weird because it still seems quiet, and there's weird not seeing anybody in there. Soccer was the same way. I haven't watched a lot of soccer, but it kind of was one you know camera angle from one side. And they had very similar, they, they kind of had, I don't know how they did it. I don't know where they were playing, whatever game I was watching, but it was the same thing. It looked like rather than a, a, a very deep, you know, where you would have crowds, it was yeah. almost some kind of video board that they had yeah. it was electronically generated or if they built something. But again, I didn't notice it as much. I don't, I don't know if you mean there's no, there's no people there. I'm not, I'll throw this up. You didn't notice all my friends that, I, that they have these baseball <laughs> games here? Well, that's a typical Minnesota game, isn't it? Well, all my, all my, all my cardboard friends. No, no, no. Um, 
But I, I would say for baseball, I, I, it's been kind of funny that they've had, you know, to, it, it took me a while to get used to the fact, but I do like that they kind of have like the little murmur and then they build up to these things. I did think the uh, first series I watched with the Twins White Sox that some of the, uh, you know, pop up, pop flies in the outfield got a bigger cheer than they normally would have. Um, <laughs> and, and what I want to know is, is are they, do they have different sounds? So like if the home team guy hits a home run, it's different than if the away team guy hits a home run. Yeah, right? they're, it's, it's, in the, it's in the stadium. So whoever's doing sound in the stadium is the one who's running the sound for the crowd noise. It's not on the broadcast. Right, right. No, I know that. But are they playing different sound effects? I mean, like if anybody hits a home yeah. run. It's, no, it's, it's quiet if it's the away team. What did they play when they were fighting in the, the Dodger? <laughs> Yeah, do they have the boo? I don't no, know. It's a, they played another one bites the dust. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, it's it's been. I, I I think the first I watched the preseason the preseason so one exhibition game and it was just kind of weird. And then now I think it's uh, I'm kind of just used to it, and it's kind of nice to have it. It'd be a little bit weird if it wasn't for something there. I do think it's interesting uh, watching the away team hits a home run and you hear the you hear the dugout start cheering and you know it's pretty loud when you from where they're at so that's kind of fun to hear so. yeah but that'd be interesting and then I, uh, hockey might be a little weird for me i, I the, the funny thing i thought was there was a uh, one team that had a moment of silence and the guy who was pumping the big crowd noise uh in there still had the crowd noise going <laughs> so that's a little odd but the nhl did what you did what, what you're talking about was they built like the video boards and the like a big stage thing behind it so to give the visualization rather than empty crowds. And I think that makes a big, a bigger difference. So it doesn't seem as weird, but um, so I don't know. I'm starting to get to the point. I don't, I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world, but I think I'm getting used to it. I think it helps, but it's not, you know, it's what it is, what it is. So. Um, I think the fact that we've got sports again, I mean, I don't know, you know, I think that people were so desperate again. I mean, cornhole's great, right? We're right at the special Olympics, but you know, ESPN showing cornhole tournaments. And last night, they actually had a foosball tournament on. Sure. So, I mean, I think people are desperate for, for watching some. Were they allowed to spin for foosball? <laughs> this is an important question. <laughs> you, only, you, you can only go 480, and that was it. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember, um, uh, was it Nicole? Nicole, were you the one with extreme tag as your – or who was it that mentioned extreme? Hold on. I think that was Aaron. Oh, was it Aaron? That was Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Watching extreme tag. <laughs> what about laser tag? That might be kind of fun. Extreme tag is better. <laughs> yeah, but laser tag, you don't have to touch anybody. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> um, so I'll put it up there. Our other quote is crowd noise. Do you like the fake crowd noise during, uh, well, Major League Baseball and NBA? I think those are the ones I've heard it at. We actually debated this topic beforehand of should people, should they have fake crowd noise? And I was against it at the time. I said players can't get up for, for silence and, they, and they, they shouldn't be playing professional sports. But look at me, I'm wrong a lot. Hey, uh, with the, and I, you know, I'm a 49er fan, but I, I've been, I guess I haven't been listening much to NFL stuff. But there was some joke about, was it, I don't know if it was the, it must have been the Giants game. Well, Dodger game, they had the cutout, right? Yeah. And they must have been playing the Giants. And they had something about they had cutouts of the quarterback and um, who's their tight end, Kittle. Um, and they said, this is the closest I've been to the, to the quarterback. And I, I don't know, there's like some jokes. I don't know if those guys were fighting or something like that. Have you heard anything? That, that, I don't know, but it was just a great joke with the way you described it. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Share the yeah. results. We had five and three for crowd yeah, noise. Question? Yeah. Was, yeah. Um, Tia, you have to unmute yourself. There you go. This go ahead. Is kind, of, kind of long, talking about the, in the, in the NBA and the NBL. It's kind of getting kind of long. You're getting kind of long? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We yeah. didn't talk about the WNBA. Oh, yeah, the WNBAs, too. They're in the ball, too. Yeah, because I didn't have another meeting that's night at, at all. It says 7 o'clock for, for tomorrow, and I looked, 
and there's nothing open or ready in me or, or any meaning to me at all. Because yesterday I took a shower and my sister said, you have a meeting to be starting really soon. And I said, there's no meeting. There's too many? No idea. Hmm. Like yesterday. Like last night. Like on Thursday, I think. Yeah. Well, hopefully there'll be some this weekend. Yeah, I hope I get more meetings tomorrow on Thursday or Friday. Because I didn't get any yesterday. Man. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I saw that for the the women's NBA that um who's the rookie? Um uh Inoscu Inoscu scored like thirty some points her first game. Jeez. What was that, Michaela? Thirty-three? Thirty-three. How do you say her name properly? <laughs> <laughs> She's from what, Oregon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Should we uh, should we see uh, should we get things uh, wrapped up here with stump the host? If anybody has any questions for us, and then see if we can answer them. Or yeah, Does anybody have anything? No. No. Nobody really has any Valpo players from 1942 that they want me to know. No uh, NASCAR race drivers. We were good at that one. I got that one right. That was I a guess. Got that one right. Well, maybe you got that one right. <laughs> Richard Petty. I, it's the only race car driver I know. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't say that. Now I know. Uh, I know a couple, I guess. All right. All right. Well, I guess not. They're going to quietly uh, go out like a big ball of flame. <laughs> Got some fireworks. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us this week. We'll we'll keep getting we'll keep doing these, and we'll. Uh, We'll be less rusty next week. At least I will be. We won't have a two-hour meeting <laughs> like before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are our favorites. Thanks for hanging in there on a on a tough Friday. We'll uh, we'll get more. We'll be more lively next week. I hope everybody has a really good weekend and that you try to get out. And even if you have to social distance, get some exercise, get some sun, drink plenty of water. Uh, make sure you follow the fitness at home. Um, and then, you know, if you are one of the groups that are going to start doing some practicing, hopefully that goes well. And you can maybe tell us about it next week. Uh, Jeff, do you have something? Yeah, I think you have to unmute yourself, Jeff. Okay. Well, okay. Can I back to it? Mom, can I back to it? I'm sorry, the audio was kind of cutting out there. Can you go say that again? Um, he wants to know when you guys are going to go back practicing for Special Olympics. Uh, so you can officially start practicing on Saturday, which is yep. tomorrow. So we had a, a long coaches meeting last night with all of the, or not all, but quite a few of the agency managers and coaches and a few parents. So it all depends on the local program and where you're at. And um, so I, what I would do is reach out to your coaches uh -huh. and ask them what the plan is because uh, technically you can start back in groups of 10 and under. We do have a lot of precautions that, that we're asking the, the coaches to take. There's going to be some screening. Um, you have to wear um, a mask to and from practice. Uh, and, you know, make sure you, you got some distance. But we're trying to do, you know, get different options with – uh, bocce, uh, golf. Um, bocce. Oh, what am I missing, gang? I'm, I'm really passing bad. kick. I'm passing kick, yeah. Instead of, um, and then so fit, uh, fitness as well. And cornhole. We How can we forget cornhole? So, mm -hmm. to do. so yep, Jeff, talk to your coach. Ask them. They should yep. have been in the meeting last night. All right, gang. Happy Bye. Friday. Uh, we'll see you next week, all right? That's good. Bye, Don. Bye-bye. Bye, Dawson. -bye. Bye, <laughs>